many of us may not pay that much attention to instrument tracks when we're working within Studio One. But uh, I'm producing these tutorial videos on every aspect of Studio One, so we're gonna that's gonna involve the instrument tracks as well. And most of us probably will come over to our instruments and just drag an instrument directly in, and Studio One will then create that instrument track. But in this video, we're gonna take uh, a bit of a look at some of the uh, configuration settings within the instrument tracks. And of course, having more knowledge about these things has never hurt anyone. So again, the first, the main method that many of us probably use is just dragging an instrument in directly into Studio One. I just brought in a presence and then Studio One creates this instrument track for us here. Now we can also create our own instrument tracks and work with some of the settings within those. And let's take a look at that. Now we can create these by coming up to track and choosing add tracks. We could also right click in the track column and add. I'm just going to press T on my keyboard and then bring up the add tracks options. Now up top we can see that we can name our track, select the type, and we're already on instrument, so that's good. You can see we've got this icon that represents the instrument tracks. We can choose the count. I'm going to actually select three. By default, auto cutter is, color is turned on, but we can deselect that and then open up this color palette and choose our own. I'm going to go ahead and select that again. Now we have input, and this is basically we are choosing what external device we're going to use to trigger or assign to this instrument track and then trigger our virtual instrument. Now, right now it's set to default. And what that means is that if I control comma and then bring up our external devices, I've got an MPK mini installed here. If I edit, I have set this as the default instrument. So if you have not set up a default instrument within this edit device menu for your external devices, then it's just going to default to all instruments. So let's bring back this menu again, choose three. So it's going to default to all inputs unless you have set up a default device. And basically any MIDI information that is being uh, sent from an external device is going to be applied to this virtual, to this instrument track. I can also come in and just choose the MPK. I've also set up a QWERTY keyboard, so I could choose that as well. Um, if I chose all, then if I were to trigger either one of these, then both of them will work with the instrument that I've assigned this track to. Now what about this ascending here? If we check this, then we can kind of have the first, second, and third of inputs coming in, particularly if we have split the channels of our audio device. So let's take a look at that. Um, let me come back to our options. And I'm going to edit the MPK Mini, and I'm going to split the channels here. So we've got 16 channels available to us. They're all active. I'm going to choose OK, OK. Come back to our track options. Add 3. I'll choose Ascending. And then we'll see what this does in a second here. Now, for the output, if we have existing instruments, which I do, I have four present uh, instances of presence open, so I could choose any of these. I could also create a new instrument and then select here from which one. Now, since I'm using Prime, I only have presence as an option, but if you're using another version of Studio One, then you're going to have more available to you there. Now, if I choose existing instrument and then choose the ascending here, I can then come in and choose the presence one, and notice we have presence two and three those will then be assigned to the other two additional tracks that we've created because we're doing three here. So I'm going to click OK and then we'll look into this ascending feature. Now, since I chose to split channels, notice here that typically we'd have the MPK Mini show up here, but now we have channel one, channel one, channel one. And apparently I did something wrong within the settings because what I wanted to show is that when you choose ascending, it should be channel one, channel two, channel three. I'm going to shift T and get rid of those. Come back and press T. I've got three for my account. 
and then I want to choose the MPK Mini, and this is what I did not do. See, these are now all available to us once we've chosen to split the channels for the MPK Mini. I'll choose channel 1. That will go to the track 1. And then for track 2, track 3 then should get channel 1, channel, or channel 2, channel 3, and so on. So I'll click OK. Now we can see that this has assigned them in an ascending order. And I'll shift T to get rid of those. So this also works with the uh, output for the existing instrument. And since I had reopened a, a window, I had none selected. So if we choose this presence 1 and ascending is checked, when we come back, we not, we not only have our channel in ascending order, but we also have presence 1, presence 2, presence 3. Now since I've already been working within this song, these are opening up in a way that we can see all of these controls here. But typically, when we first begin a song, they're going to open up in normal. And we don't have complete access to all of the controls. The setting below here essentially needs to be at medium or above in order for us to have access to all of the controls for the instrument channel. We could also use Shift and E to expand out our tracks. Shift and W will then uh, zoom back out. Now we can change our instruments and uh, input devices at any time within this track column here. This top drop down menu allows us to choose a different uh, VST instrument. We can also choose none. Now below that we can choose from any of our external devices or in this instance the QWERTY keyboard that's attached. We can also quickly access our configure uh, settings for the external devices and come in and make edits. We can also accomplish this by using the inspector. So if I press F4 and then we can come and see that we can choose from our instruments, channel, or other external devices here as well. One last thing that I'd like to mention about the instrument tracks is that they do not contain audio. They're strictly uh, there to record our MIDI information and then allow us a means to edit that information once it's been recorded. So if I F3 and bring up the console, I'll F4 and close out that inspector as well, and close out the browser, we can see that none of our uh, instrument tracks are listed here in the console. These are audio tracks that are assigned to the individual instances of presence, our VST instrument. So if I create a track, I'm not going to assign this to an existing instrument and I'll just press OK. Now you can see we have track 1.6 here. If I bring up the console again, that does not show up here because again the instrument tracks are strictly a means for recording our MIDI data which is not audio um, and for editing that information.